Come on, somebody ought to be praising God right now. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Is he the source of your strength? Hallelujah. He is good. Thank you, choir. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Well, it's good to be back before you. It seems like it's been a long time since I've been up here. I'm like, man, it's been a couple of weeks. It seemed like a month or two. But I'm thanking God for the opportunity today. Amen. 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 Good morning to you once again. And <clears throat> as my wife mentioned, I'm going to be closing out the Resurrecting Hope series today. But I want to give some thank yous um, for the past couple of weeks. I want to start by first thanking Dr. Darrell Jones for his uh, 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 the powerful word he preached. Amen. <clears throat> On Mission Sunday. He challenged us to have a missions mindset and to obey the mind of Christ's imperative. He was just talking about going and making disciples. We've already been given that commission. It's already been put out there for us to do it. We're already going. You should be already about God's business. Then on Memorial Day, we, uh, last Sunday, we had Reverend Kevin Willis, and he, he came and he, amen. Preached a timely word about trauma is the new mission field. He talked about not uh, uh, letting uh, our loved ones be isolated. And that's about just going out, being who God has called us to be. We are supposed to go out to where people are and to bring them in to the comfort of God. Amen. Hopefully that's your, your desire each day you get up. God, give me an opportunity. Give me, God, a, a moment that I can touch somebody's life. And I believe if you pray that prayer, God will give you just that. He will open the door for you to be able to speak into somebody's life and be an encouragement to them. Amen? Amen. Amen. We kicked this series off, believe it or not, doing Passion Week. Man, that was the week leading up to Easter. Isn't that something? Here we are, we're on Pentecost Sunday, and we're closing that series out. But that was God. And of course, each week, we, you know, there were some weeks in between where there's some other sermons that came, but it's something I didn't, I didn't realize that until this morning. I said, wow, you know, it's been, you know, from Easter to now, we've been talking about resurrecting hope. And so, of course, we found out something about hope that it's not wishful thinking. You know, it's not one of those things where you say, I hope so but it's a confident expectation that you know without a shadow of a doubt, you know, doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what you've been told. It doesn't matter, you know, what you think in your mind. You have a confident expectation that it's going to take place. Why do we have that confident expectation? See, because we have someone we can be confident in. See, because Jesus got up, see, because he was resurrected, like he said he was going to be, we have a living hope that we can hold on to. See, our hope is not a dead hope. That's why it's not wishful. That's why it's confident, because the hope that we are holding on to is a living hope. We found this truth in our foundation of Scripture that we talked about each week in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. And I'm going to read that one final time. Hopefully y'all got it now. Write it down. Let it be something that you meditate on from time to time. And it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that goes that does not fade away, reserved for you in heaven, who are kept by the power through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Peter encourages us about this extravagant gift of hope. But he also gave us the key. Remember uh, last time I was before you, I talked about the key. You know, what is this key? How do we, how do we keep this thing? How do we keep this, this hope? And he told us in, in, in the fifth verse, Peter lets us know that the key, you know, for us to experience the power of God and to, and to experience hope both now and in the future is through our faith. See, the text talks about through faith. 
Not anything else. Not through your determination. Not because somebody opened the door for you, but it says through faith. That's how you're going to be able to experience this hope. If you remember in my last message, I, I talked about that thing, and I, I talked about that God is able and he's willing to bring the impossible. This, this, is, this is what we do. We talk about true faith. God is able, he's willing to, to do the impossible, the miraculous, the supernatural, the extraordinary in your life, despite, just like I said earlier, despite what you see. It doesn't, doesn't matter what it looks like. Because faith is not what you see. Faith is what you're believing. Faith is who you're trusting. That's your faith. And if you have faith, God will bring it to pass. See, if you're looking for it and you're waiting to get it before you say, I got faith, then that's not faith at all. Because you don't have to hope for what you already got in your hands. See, if you got it in your hand, it's no, no longer you need the faith. You don't need faith anymore. See, I don't need faith to say I'm holding this handkerchief in my hand because I got it in my hand. But if I didn't have one and I said, man, I got faith to believe I'm going to get a handkerchief and then somebody's going to bring me one, then that's faith. Well, sometimes we need a little bit of help, don't we? How many need help sometimes? All right, you, I'm in good company then because if y'all didn't raise your hand, I was going to get worried. I was going to say, oh my gosh, it's just, just me, Lord. I need some help. We need a little help sometimes. Matter of fact, we need to help a lot of the times. <laughs> if we be honest with ourselves, we need a lot of help sometimes. Because, see, we can't obtain this faith on our intellect. We can't get it on human means. And sometimes we try to do that thing. We try to press through this thing in our own strength. But that's not how we're going to get it. That's why we need some help. See, God, I told you last time, God has given each of us a measure of faith. So we don't need to ask God for faith because he already gave us faith. Each one of us, he's given all of us a measure of faith. But we need to do, we got to ask him to reveal what he's already given to us. Say, God, I need you to reveal the thing, the faith, the thing that you've given to me. God, let, it, let, let, me, let me begin to, to, to come into an understanding, a connection with that thing. See, 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 what we really need is we, we need uh, uh, the light of hope. My wife told you that's the focus today, the light of hope. And you know, a light shines in. Yeah. Yeah. See, a light illuminates. And so we, we need that light to shine in so it can reveal. So it can reveal the hope that's in us already. Amen. Turn with me to Ephesians, the first chapter. I'm going to be reading verse 18, and I'm going to use the Amplified Version, uh, Amplified Bible today, because I, I believe that it will give you so much clarity in what God is speaking to us today. And it says this, and I pray that the eyes of your heart, this is Paul speaking, the very center of your core, your being, may be enlightened, flooded by the light, by the Holy Spirit, so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, God's people. Now, if you can't understand that text, if you can't understand what God is saying to us today, See me after church. I can help you out some more. The Apostle Paul is writing to the saints in Ephesus. See, see, notice something here. He's writing to believers. How many believers we got in the house? All right. This chapter starts out with, with him, him talking about the blessings of Christ, and then it goes into thanksgiving for the believers, but then he, 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 he concludes it with this prayer. He begins to pray. I, he, 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 see, Paul was a praying man. <clears throat> he often told the, the, the people wherever he went, I'm praying for you. And the thing about it, he was praying for them. A lot of times he was locked up in jail and going through persecution, but yet and still he was praying for them. How many of us can get to that place 
That's God, I want to be there. God, where it doesn't matter what's going on in my life, my eyes are not on myself, they're on somebody else. I'm praying and I'm interceding. But, but Paul prayed this, 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 he prayed that their eyes, the eyes of their hearts uh, uh, would be enlightened. Isn't that what the text said? And, and, and basically it's to, it spoke to the very core. It says that, that it talks about the heart, the very core. Uh, 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 would be flooded with the light by the Spirit of, of God. So, so God, he's saying this. He said, I, I, I desire that your heart be open. That your heart would be enlightened. See, that's why we're talking about the light of hope. See, what he was doing, I, I'm going to make this kind of personal for myself here. He, uh, I, I'm going to say this is how he said it. This, I'm going to use me. This is what he was saying. He was saying, he was saying Charles, I, I know you already saved. You're born again. You, you gave your life to the Lord. I know that the blindness of sin have been removed from your eyes. And, 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 and now that you say, I'm praying that divine uh, illumination would, would, would overshadow your heart. So why? So that you can experience the full revelation. See, because what was happening, they, they were saved. But they weren't experiencing the full revelation of the hope of God's calling in their life. Got anybody there today? Anybody be honest and say, uh, uh, Pastor, this is me. I haven't experienced the, the, the full revelation. I, I, I need some illumination. I need some light to shine so that I can begin to fully, so it can be fully revealed in my life today. See, it was an urgency. Paul was praying this urgent prayer. He, 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 why do you think that was? He, I, I think he understood thinking about the physical eyes. See, the physical eyes, you know, when we, 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 physical eyes we use to see this world. But when we have a problem with our physical eyes, when they're impaired, we have to get a, some type of an exam, right? But in order to see spiritually, you can't see spiritually with the physical eyes. That's right. So you have to see spiritually through spiritual lenses. And if our spiritual eyes are out of focus, we're going to have difficulty seeing. We're going to be stumbling through. We're going to be tripping up. We're going to be bumping into stuff. We're going to be falling short. I believe that's what was driving his urgency. See, he was looking at those, he, the, those saints, and he was saying, something ain't right. God, I know you saved them, but they can't see where they're going. They're not f totally fulfilled. Everything that you're trying to, to, to do through them and in them hasn't yet been revealed to them. <sighs> see, in the church today, See, I'm notice I'm saying in the church. So many of the believers had gotten complacent with just being saved. I'm saved now. That's enough. We've been satisfied with just, I came to the altar and I gave my heart to the Lord. I'm done. I'm good. We serve in church, we come, we, 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 we fulfill our duties. But when you look at it, that's the very least of what God expects of us. See, see, God has called us. You know you've been called, right? If, if, if you say you're a believer today, that means you've been called. And you answered the call. But he's calling us to much more. He didn't call us just to be saved. Oh, it's getting quiet. You thought you got called just to go to heaven? No. Man, that's the icing. That's the dessert. That's the reward. But he called you to do something in the earth. See, we have to do something. Each one of us, we need to stop. And we need to begin to do a self-reflection. We got to ask ourselves a question. And this is one time I'm going to say it's okay to talk to yourself. Because you need to say self. 
Uh, has my heart been illuminated? So you need to ask yourself questions sometimes, and you can answer because you know. See, we say, well, it's okay to talk to yourself, but don't answer yourself. But no, this time you need to ask the question and answer the question. Because you need to say, Lord, say, say, say self, uh, has my heart been illuminated to the point that I'm, that I'm experiencing the, the full revelation of the hope of the Lord's calling in my life? <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not here to personally indict anybody. But the Bible does tell me this. The Bible tells me I can, I can judge you by your fruit. See, when, you, when, you, when, you, when, when, when your, your spiritual eyes are impaired, there, there, there's little revelation of what God is doing. There, 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 there's, there's, there's little sensitivity to the move of God. Sometimes you don't even realize what God is doing because you're disconnected visually. You don't see spiritually. You don't know what God is even doing in the earth. Notice I said the church. Now I ain't say Bethel. But it applies to us in Bethel as well. We don't have no fruit. We're like a barren tree. And if you read your Bible, you know being a barren tree is not a good place for a believer to be. That's not a good testimony. Because you remember when Jesus walked past the tree. Oh, it was beautiful. Had a whole bunch of leaves. But it had no fruit. So it couldn't provide anything for anybody else. It was just satisfying itself. I'm sucking up nutrients from the earth. My leaves are beautiful. But I'm not doing anything else. I got no fruit, no substance for somebody that's hungry. Hmm. Huh. See, when our physical eyes are not functioning, what do we do? We go to the eye doctor, don't we? And where they always start to see if you know your alphabets. <laughs> I just never could figure that thing out. They always, okay, do you know your alphabets? <laughs> You can't memorize a thing. I don't care how much you try. <laughs> and so, so, so you begin to get this, this eye exam. You, there's a chart that you see. And when you look at that chart, as you read each one of those lines, they can tell something about your vision. And based on where you stop on that chart, they make adjustments. Some of you need glasses to read things far away. Some of you need glasses to read things close up. But adjustments are made for the physical eye. So so what about the spiritual sight? I I believe Paul gave us the answer in in four profound words that are found in Ephesians 1.18. Simple words. It just says that you will know. Hey, how does that affect my eyes? <laughs> See, that you will know, in other words, that you will grow. That's what he's saying. That you will know, that you will know what? That you will grow in the knowledge of Jesus. That's how your, 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 your physical, I mean your spiritual eyes, eyesight is tested. And that's how you grow. Your spiritual sight. Grow in the knowledge of Jesus. You growing? Did y'all notice that? What, is that what that was? Y'all know that? Or y'all just said G row in the. How many of you did that? Be honest. Come on, how many of you did that? Come on, be honest. Be honest. I know some of y'all looked at it and said G row in the knowledge of Jesus. No, grow in the knowledge. Of Jesus. See, we test our spiritual sight based on how well we know Jesus. That's how you're able to fulfill the calling. 
your calling in this world. See, if you don't know him, you can't fulfill his calling. If you're not growing in him, you can't fulfill his calling. See, because whether you realize it or not, the calling, see, 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 this thing is a progressive call. See, you might have been doing something 10 years ago, but now 10 years later, God still got something for you to do. So you didn't finish 10 years ago. He never stops giving you assignments. That's why you have to continue to grow in your knowledge of him because the different assignments require different knowledge and understanding and levels in him. See, he can't send a baby out there. That's why Jesus had to take his disciples under his wing and teach them. You notice he didn't send them right out. He had to work with them a little bit because he knew they weren't ready. And even after teaching them, he sent them out. There were times when they still failed because they needed to grow some more. He said, some of these things come by fasting and praying. That's why you couldn't do it. Press into me some more. So for the rest of our time together today, I'm, I'm going to... I got two prayers I've been praying. The first prayer is that you will be enlightened to understand what you've already been given. How many of you know that God has already given you what you need? But you got to know what you got. Because if you don't know that you got it, trust me, you're not using it. So I'm praying, God, that you would enlighten them to understand what you've already given them. And then I pray that you would enlighten them to, 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 to begin in how to, how to apply what they now realize they have. Because just because you realize you got it don't mean you know what to do with it. Because sometimes we get it and still don't know what to do. But I believe that God's going to enlighten you today. So why are you talking about the light of hope today? That he's going to shine his light, that he's going to enlighten you in how to do those things. So we're going to look at, we're going to kind of examine this prayer that Paul prayed. So we're going to jump back to verse 17. Paul prayed this. He said that, that, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. What was he doing? He was praying for revelation and awakening in knowledge. See, if you're in this walk, if you're a believer and you don't desire knowledge, you don't want to learn, you're in the wrong, you can't work for this kingdom. You, you can't be a, a, a part of this kingdom if you are not trying to grow in knowledge. See, he, he said this in the word. That's God's word. That's not me. So, so my first point is this, that the, the light of hope reveals knowledge. That's why you need the light shining in you. See, this knowledge is not knowledge you can get from a book. There is not. See, see, books are great resources. A lot of times we, we like to go to books and we, we, we want to look up stuff. But see, the people of God need the God of the people. See, he's the one that's going to give you the knowledge that you need to accomplish the things he desires. See, before you can get the resource, you got to get the source. See, we put it back, we put it the wrong way. We want to get the resources first, and then we want to go to God when the resource fails. That's why Paul prayed, he prayed, he prayed, uh, 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 Lord, give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He, he, was, he was talking about getting the knowledge of God, not from a resource, not from... See, what is he talking about? It's talking about us getting a complete understanding of our position and our possession that we receive in Christ. See, that's the revelation that he was talking about. So you got to understand who you are and what you possess before you can use it. If you don't understand it, you can't apply it. 
What he's doing, he's asking God to open our spiritual eyes. Tell God, say, Lord, open my spiritual eyes. And, and go ahead and say this right behind us so I can fully comprehend the reality, God, of what you've done because of your salvation in my life. That's what it's about. That's why we want to, 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 to have this illumination taking place in our life. See, when Paul mentions wisdom, what he's talking about is this. He's talking about the revealed knowledge to live for the Lord. See, you can't do it unless you understand it. See, this is an active thing. It's not complacent. That's why I said you just, just get saved to come and sit down and go to heaven. See, you got saved because now, now you're going to be a student of God. See, we just want to disciple people, but you can't disciple what you haven't been discipled in. You can't give what you don't have. You can't explain what you don't understand. You ever had anybody trying to tell you something and you know they don't know what they're talking about? You be looking at them all kind of ways like, what? <laughs> <You're> like, what? <laughs> yes. That active. <laughs> See, we got to be teachable. How many of you have been good students? How many of you good students? Oh, I see some hands down. Y'all want a good student. See, you got to be teachable in this thing. <laughs> See, we got to be open to, 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 to hear what God is saying. And not only be open to what he's saying, but then you got to, got, got to decide that, okay, God, I'm going to do what you just told me. See, that's being teachable. Because sometimes we understand what God wants us to do, but we don't do it. God, um, no, Lord, um, can you get that to, to, to Brother Eric and let him do that one? Uh, I just want to, to sit over here and, no, you got to be willing to do it. See, see, that's what, that's, what, that's what the spirit of wisdom does. It yields a willingness for us to learn. See, and, and not only to learn, but a readiness to apply what we just learned. That's the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That's what happens when it begins to work in your life. <laughs> See, this is a prayer we should be praying. It was already, it's been prayed over us, but we should be praying this prayer every day. We should be saying, God, Lord, just, 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 God, give me a willingness to learn, God. Give me a willingness, God, to understand. God, give me a willingness to, 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 to search it out, but then give me, a, a God, the, the, the ability to apply it, to put it to use. To begin to do it, no matter how difficult it may seem to me. Because I, you have to understand, if God gives it to you to do, trust me, he's going to give you the power to do it. But what happens a lot of times, we, we, we get the assignment, but then we start thinking about, can I do it? Lord, can, can, do I have the power, the strength? I'm going to let you know ahead of time, no you don't. You don't have it. You don't need it. He's going to give you what you need to do it. We need to ask the Lord to help us to submit to his wisdom so he can teach us his truth. See, see, when you submit to him, oh my gosh. Boy, he'll pour into you. He'll pour into you like you never... Believe that he would open up your mind to understand. But it requires that you submit to him. How many of us like to submit? How many of us don't like? I'm not going to look up. <laughs> See, sometimes we think we know what's best for us. You ever been that know-it-all? God said go left. You know, I can take a shortcut. I know the better way to go. <laughs> I'm going to go this way. I know I'm going to get there quicker. But God just told you to go this way. I, I, I can get there the other way. No. He knows what's best for us. He knows better than we know. Yeah. 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 See, a lot of times we've learned the things that we've learned from our traditions and, you know, from, from, from studies and resources. And, you know, some of us, how many of y'all used to remember, used to ask Jeeves? I know I'm going way back. How many of y'all know that? Raise your hand. I know, I know somebody know what Jesus. I know some of the young people are like, Jeez. Like my niece, she probably saying, who in the world is Jeez? I 
mean, who, who, gave Jesus, who gave him any kind of authority to know something? Who said he was right? The thing about Jesus, he had to get his stuff from somebody else. You can ask God. He's the source. You don't have to worry about him trying to go search it out. And Lord, don't ask Siri. <laughs> see, see, Jesus was replaced by just ass. They kicked Jeeves out. So I guess Jeeves must have, he, he ain't smart enough. So we're going to just ask. And then after that, it wasn't good enough. So then here comes Siri. So now we ask Siri. But when you get home, don't do it right now. Ask Siri how to get to heaven. <laughs> and see what she say. So if you're trying to get your direction from Siri, you're going to be in trouble. Because more than likely, she's going to say, uh, I'm not sure I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be just lost. But the true source is God's word. Ask God. He's not going to lead you the wrong way. He's not going to lead you astray. He's not going to give you an answer that's going to prove to be wrong. And he'll never tell you, oh, I don't quite understand your question. <laughs> but when you ask God to reveal this truth, you got to be willing to accept it. <laughs> you got to say, okay, God, I got it now. That's how we grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus. See, he'll give it to us. You got to accept it. You got to put it to use. See, see, the philosophy of man says, 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 know thyself. You're the authority. You got it. You don't need nobody else. No. See, that's what, that's what the philosophy teaches. But the gospel teaches know thy God. <laughs> see, if you know thy God, you know your God, you can ask him whatever you need. He's all-knowing. It's nothing God doesn't know. There's no answer he can't provide. And he don't have to go look it up in no book. He don't have to tell you, I'll get back with you real shortly. Let me, let me go and check it out. He already didn't check it out. Why? Because he's the one who created it. <sighs> mm. See, See, in verse 18... Paul, he, he, he was praying that the eyes of our heart might be enlightened. And I began to study that thing. Oh, he said the eyes, your heart got eyes? No. What does he mean by that? I'm going to explain it to you. Because my second point is this. It says that the, the, the light of hope yields understanding. Well, Pastor Tosh, you just said it eyes of my heart. Mm -hmm. See, the word heart that's used here, uh, if you look it up, the word heart here talks about deep thought and understanding. See, it, it, it's a place, it, it's the place where, it's the core place that you function out of. This is where everything operates out of. That's why I use the Amplified Bible because I want you to get this clear picture of what this text is talking about. See, the heart is where we think. That's where we understand. This is where our emotions live. This is, this is where all of our understanding rests. But the light of hope yields understanding. See, we talk about something being on our heart. We talk about feelings. You ever say that all the time? It's on my heart. It's the way you feel or the way you think about something. When you say, say, uh, 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 something's on my heart. But Paul wants us to move. He's trying to get the, 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 these Ephesians and us as well to move beyond feeling and thinking to get to understanding. See, when you begin to understand a thing, it's a whole different place. See, see you got to understand that Jesus is the one who gives us the understanding. Look what it says in 1 John 5 and 20. See, our understanding is not something that we, 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 we can get from a textbook. Not this kind of understanding. But this is the understanding that Jesus gives. This is what it says. It says, and we know that the Son of God has come, and he has given us understanding. 
so that we can know the true God. See, you can't even know God without getting understanding that Christ gives. That's why it's so important for you to desire God to, to illuminate your mind, get your spiritual eyes open so that you can even understand who God the Father is. And now we live in fellowship with the true God because we live in fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. How do you live in fellowship with him? Oh, because you're getting to know him. You're spending some time with him, some intimate time. That's how you get to know him. Because he is the one. He is the one. He's the only true God. And he is eternal life. So even if your philosophy is, I just got saved to go to heaven, you can't even get there without knowledge of God. That's what the text just said. You got to know him in order to, to understand who he is because he is eternal life. He's the one. So if you don't even know what, who God is, how you going to get to where God said you can be? So you got to get to the understanding that, 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 that Jesus reveals to us. He allows us to know God the Father. He reveals the Father to us. But Paul, Paul, then he moved from understanding to enlightenment. See, he, okay, you got some understanding there. You're beginning to understand, but now you need to be enlightened. Enlightened comes from a Greek word, potizo, and, and it means to shed rays, to shine, or to brighten up, to illuminate or to light, or light to make see. And that brings us to my next point, which is the light of hope illuminates. So you already know that it, it reveals knowledge. We know that. We know that it yields understanding, and, and, and now we're seeing that it illuminates. Y'all know what illumination is, right? I hope y'all do. We've been talking about the light. We, we've been talking about light all this time. You should know what illumination is. See, we can't operate solely on feelings and emotions. And some of us are emotional. You know, but feelings and emotions are real. I, I don't, don't think Pastor Charles, I can't have my emotions. Yes, you can. <laughs> but your emotions and your feelings must be aligned uh, with the truth of God's word. Yes. See, you got to put your emotions and your feelings under subjection yes. to the word of God. Not trying to say, God here, God, this just who I am. No. Not when he comes in. Because I declare the word says that the old is gone. And the new comes. So if you still have that testimony, you know, because you got some things that you haven't let go yet, and you say, that's just who I am. Mm -mm. That's, who you that's who you decide to be. That's who you choose to be. Because he said he can make all things new. Yes. Now, now let me see how much time I got. Real quick testimony about all things new. I told y'all I used to be a hothead. But do y'all see me as a hothead? Most people think, man, he's just so laid back and relaxed. I was a hothead. Fuss, cuss, act crazy in a minute. Fight in a minute. Now I'm just so, all things new. Yeah. All things new. Now that don't mean you can back me in no corner. <laughs> <laughs> No, all things new. <laughs> but we can't. Look, Colossians uh, uh, 3.16 says this. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. See, when our hearts are controlled by the word of God in the direction of the Holy Spirit, look, we... It, it, we're going to understand things from a different perspective. We're going to see things differently. 
We begin to understand some deep things of God because now we're pressing into his word and we allow his word to, to begin to illuminate. See, what's happening? God shining his divine floodlight. That's what the scripture said, that the floodlight is going to shine in there and help you to comprehend. It's going to reveal something so that you can understand the hope of your calling. Because I told you, if you don't understand it, you can't walk it out. See, when you begin to get to that place, the Bible and, and, and all the things that you read, it becomes so simple. See, sometimes we read, people read the Bible. Now, I remember when I first got saved, I used to read the Bible, and I was like, man, what in the world? I was reading the King James Version. That didn't help. And I couldn't understand it. But it wasn't even the King James Version. It was the fact that I didn't truly understand God. It was the moment when I began letting God begin to open my mind and my understanding. That's when I began to understand this. I don't care what version I read. God's going to speak to me because now I'm not trying to read words. I'm hearing God. And it's a difference. You ever read a scripture and then as soon as you read it, then you try to remember what did I just read? And you can't even quote it back to yourself. Except Jesus wept. <laughs> if you can't quote Jesus wept back, you have some issues. <laughs> but I've done that. I have sat and read. Basically, I was calling words. I wasn't hearing God. And it's a difference. See, that's what divine, uh, that's, what, that's what illumination does. Illumination takes you from that place, and you begin now to understand. It's a practical example of this in, in, in Luke, the 24th chapter. See, see, you remember the two disciples that were walking down the Emmaus Road after Jesus was resurrected? And they was walking. Oh, they was just talking. Jesus was walking right beside them. Oh, they were saying, oh, a heart's burning. They didn't understand why their heart was burning. Jesus was right there. They walking along, but it wasn't until their eyes were open that they understood the one that they were talking about was right there with them. It's the same with us. Sometimes some, we've heard truths. You know, we've heard things. We've heard all types of, of powerful messages preached from the pulpit. Especially here recently, we've been talking about resurrecting hope. But if the Holy Spirit is not illuminating you, it's not illuminating your mind and, and, and affecting your spiritual eyes, you're not going to understand. You won't be able to comprehend it, and that means you won't be able to apply it to your life. That's why we have to continue to ask God, enlighten me. Come on, somebody say, God, enlighten me. God, illuminate in my life. Look, that's what Jesus was doing with his disciples in John 16. He was explaining to them that the spirit of truth would guide them into everything. That, that he let them know that, that look, look, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to come representing me. Yeah. He's not coming, coming in his own authority, but he's going to speak back concerning me. <sighs> that the Holy Spirit was going to draw them. Uh, 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 uh. It will help them to understand God's truth. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. It's something today, you know, and it just happened the way God works these things out, that today is Pentecost, Sunday. The day that we, 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 we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So you have to understand how important it is. Some people say, oh, it's not necessary. You don't need that today. Uh, just for the old days, Old Testament days. Oh, no, you need the Holy Spirit. You need God's power. You need his spirit to even understand what he's saying. It's his spirit that illuminates you. It's his spirit that opens up your eyes so you can understand. That's why you just, before I understood, before I was illuminated, before I received the, the, the Holy Spirit in my life, all I was doing was calling words. Jesus is the light. But it didn't mean nothing to me. But now I understand when I say Jesus is the light, I know what that means. <laughs> Woo. He's the light. So, so, so he illuminates. I'm almost done. Illuminates. 
So Paul continues to pray. Now, now he's prayed about knowledge. He's prayed about understanding. He's prayed about illuminating. But he did something else. He, he started praying about them comprehending the, the, the mysteries of the plans of God. Now, now, you definitely not going to understand no mystery of God without being in connection with his spirit. See, sometimes we're trying to figure God out. I know God got a plan for my life, but you can't figure it out. See, because you're not connected to his spirit. His spirit is the one that makes his plans known. Look what it says in 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. It said, but it was us that God, it was was to us that God revealed these things. How? By his spirit. For his spirit does what? Searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. How are you trying to get the secret without the spirit? You can't get it. You can't get that understanding. It says that, 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 that the Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. We're trying to get it from our cousin. No. The Spirit of God. See, see God doesn't need to search out anything. He's all-knowing. <laughs> he knows everything. So for us, you know, it, 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 it's, we, it, it's an honor for us to become enlightened by God. God, enlighten me. I pray all the time, God, just open my eyes. God, just enlighten me with divine revelation. Man, so I can, I can, I can, I can know your truth and apply it to my life. If you're not praying that kind of prayer, you need to start. You need to start, I mean, every day. Don't pray it one day and then don't pray it again for six months. You should ask God every day, God, just enlighten me. That's what, this, that's what Paul is doing here in Ephesians 1 and 18. He's summarizing the mysterious plans of God. He's trying to let us know uh, they, they, they can't be understood apart from the aid of the Holy Spirit. You can't get it without the Spirit of God. You need God's Spirit. And if we don't allow the Spirit to reveal it to us, it's going to always be a mystery. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to walk around not understanding the things of God. And I'm claiming, I'm letting people know that I'm a believer. I'm saved, sanctified, baptized, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I don't understand God. I don't understand the deep things of God. I don't understand the mysteries of God. Because I'm not connected to his spirit. Now, now Paul, Paul, real quick, he, he focused on two things regarding the mysteries. He talked about the hope of our calling. And he talked about the riches of his glorious inheritance. How many of you know you got an inheritance? How many know you got a calling? You got to fulfill your calling before you get to the inheritance. You do know that, right? So look, look what the word says. The word says in, in Romans 8, 29. He's talking about what is, what is this calling? See, understand, the hope of our calling is both, you know, something that takes place earthly now and in the future. So there's the eternal and there is now, present. Don't worry, it's just, it's just music. <laughs> See, from the beginning, God desired for us to be conformed to the image of his son. You know that, right? See, 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 this is what Romans 8, 29 says. It says, for whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. You know, he foreknew you. He desired you to be in the image of his son. He said that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. See, God's plan was for us to be like Jesus. 
That's what the Father, he wants us to, to, to be in his image. Remember, God made us. We're the only thing God made, the only creation God made that's in his image is man. And so he desires for us to be just like his son. His plan also desires for us to walk worthy of our calling. How many of you know you got a calling on your life? If you saved today, God has called you. He has a calling on your life, and you got to walk worthy of that. And also, you got to mature. That means you can't be a babe all your life. You can't be a babe in Christ all your life. Sometimes we think it's better to be a babe because I don't have, I won't have no responsibilities. No, the expectation is for you to mature. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, it tells us about both. In Ephesians 4 and 1, Paul tells us uh, to walk worthy of the calling. That, that means that you, you, you're understanding God's call in your life, and you're going out every day, and you, you're making it the priority of your life. Yeah. Then Ephesians 4 and 13, it lets us know that, that it's going to continue. You're going to do this thing. You're going to keep doing it uh, until time. To, we all come into unity in the faith together. See, it goes on to say this, say, 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 say uh, uh, this will continue until we all come in such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be what? Mature. Yes. See, y'all think I'll just be making this stuff up. No. God expects you to fulfill your calling. God expects you to mature in Him. The only way you're going to do that is to be illuminated in God. Man, we fully grasp this stuff. Man, what God can do in your life and through your life is beyond what you can begin to think. That's why you look, at, you look at some people and you be like, man, God is really using them. Man, God is really doing something through them. Why do you think? He has no respect of a person. The reason why God can use those individuals in such a powerful and mighty way is because they've been totally yielded to God. They're God, I know what my calling is, and God, I want to fulfill my calling to the fullest. And God, each and every day, I want to be illuminated so I can grow in you and mature. And the more I know about you, the closer I get to you, the more I learn of you, the more powerful I become, and the more, God, you can use my life. He don't just flip a coin and say, I'm going to give it to him or give it to her. No, it's for each of us. That's why the scripture says this will continue until we all come into the unity of our faith and the knowledge of the Son, that we all will mature. Second part of the plan was talking about this inheritance that we have. See, we got an inheritance. See, God, he, 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 I'm going to bless you now and I'm going to bless you later. Remember you was to buy them candies called now and later? That's how God is. God said, I'm going to bless you now and I'm going to bless you later. Aren't you glad that God is like that? <laughs> so you got to understand this life that we're living here on this earth is not all that God's going to bless us with. See, if all you're doing is trying to fulfill this, things in this life, you're going to sell yourself short. Because the, the, the internal inheritance, man, that, it, this stuff don't compare to that. How many of you got streets of gold you're walking on? How many of you walking on streets of gold? How, how many of you, how many of you uh, don't, don't, don't have nothing going on? No, you, 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 you're in a glorified body. How many of you, you know, don't have no pain, no sickness, no aging, no, you don't need no glasses. You, I mean, you don't, you can move from here to there and you ain't got to walk and get in your car. See, the inheritance, it, man, this stuff is way beyond this stuff that we, we're grabbing hold. See, we spend so much time focusing on here that we don't even realize the inheritance that God has for us. But see, most of us don't want to experience that inheritance because we want to keep living here. Yeah, I'm not saying, yeah, I want to live here too. But at the same time, I'm like, God, I'm looking forward, God, to that inheritance. For what you have set for me, God, and, and after this, because this is not going to compare. 
See, better things are waiting for us down the road. But see, see, only the Spirit of God can help you understand these things. Look, look, look at Romans 8, 16 and 17. See, only the Spirit of God can help you understand this. It says the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then we are heirs. We're not stepchildren. We're heirs. We're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. See, you don't understand what that means if you don't have the Spirit of God working in you. What does that mean? Man, can you just stop for a moment and think about the fact that, that God's saying, I'm going well, I'm, I'm, I'm to reward you like my son. You're going to be a joint heir with him. See, y'all ain't get it. Y'all ain't get it. Y'all, y'all ain't get it. Y'all, y'all still looking at your bank account down here. Joint heir with Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. Same account. <laughs> you ain't got no junior account. Same. He said joint heir. You are heir of God. God owns it all. He created it all. And you were his heir. That way we can say, oh yeah, I own this. See, you're only looking at what you got in your bank. You're only looking at your house. No, if I'm a joint heir, if I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ, God owns all of this. Yes. Real quick, before I'm going to let you go. My wife and I have met with a financial advisor. And this is true. This is funny. He asked us, he said, what would you say your net worth is? We looked at each other. I said, shoot, I can't put no number on that. He said, why? I said, man, my father owns all of this. It was a, he, he couldn't do nothing but laugh. I said, my father owns it all. He said, what do you think I said? What do you think they said if we wrote that down? Write it down. <laughs> Can't put no number on it. <laughs> As we told them, my net worth, can't put no number on that. Shucks, my father owned all this stuff, man. He owned you, your company, he owns it all. <laughs> man. <laughs> Listen, y'all can get on your feet. Come on, team. I'm all I'm about to dismiss. Listen. Divine truth lets us know that we are beneficiaries of God. But it's his Holy Spirit that reveals it. It's his light that has to shine to illuminate, to help us to understand. The light of Christ. Look, we all are learning our way through this thing. We never, none of us have obtained it all. We, we still don't understand it all. You know, there's still benefits that I don't, I don't understand all. But every day I ask God, Lord, give me more knowledge and understanding. God, help me to, 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 to understand a little more of your truth. God, give me your spirit a little more today that I can understand more than I did yesterday. And God will do that. Until then, I'm just going to keep walking in the light of hope. Until I get to the full understanding that God wants me to have, I'm just going to keep walking in it. I'm going to be like John in 1 John. This is what he said. He said, he said Beloved, now uh, we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed, but we shall be. <laughs> but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Isn't that something? And everyone who has hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. 
See, that, that's, that's, that's how you have to carry on in this life. You have to understand who you are. You have to understand that, God, I, I may not understand everything, but every day I'm seeking you more. I, I want to, to, to have more knowledge. Let your light shine. I can have more knowledge, more understanding, more illumination. God, more, oh God, a, a re revelation of the mysteries that you have put before me because it's to my benefit. My final prayer today for us all is that we will continue to do just that. That we will walk in the light of hope. I hope that, I pray that hope has been resurrected in somebody's life. Over this 50 something days we've been looking at resurrecting hope. I pray that you now understand that hope is a confident expectation that you can hold on to that you know that you know that you know not wishful it's not a coin toss heads or tails but it's heads I win tails I win it's a win win because of hope let me pray for you today. Father, we thank you today and we praise you, God. We thank you for this day, God, that we celebrate and, and, and recognize, God. You, oh God, desire for us to understand the truth of who you are. God, that you desire to reveal to us, God, through your spirit, the plans you have for us, the mysteries you have before us, the understanding that we need, God, to do, oh God, the kingdom work. And then in the end, God, you got a reward for us, an inheritance that nothing in this earth can compare to, an eternal inheritance. That's one that will never rot, it will never dissolve, it will never run out. It's only blessing on top of blessing, on top of blessing, on top of blessing. And we thank you for that today. We thank you for it today. Continue, God, to help us to walk in the light of hope. Never to turn our lights off, but every day, God, to seek you even the more for revelation and illumination that only you give. We thank you for that today. I pray even now, God, for that one, Lord, who, who doesn't know you. We know they're walking in darkness, God, and they need the light of Christ. They need light to shine. You are that light. And so before we dismiss now, you might be here in this sanctuary or you might be on, online today. Jesus desires for you to come out of darkness. See, this resurrecting hope that we've been talking about, you don't understand that when you're in darkness. The light of hope that I just spoke about today can be yours if you accept the source into your life today. And if that's you today, I'm not going to take a whole lot of time because I believe the way the Spirit has been moving today, He's already touched your heart. And if that's you today, you feel Him drawing you out of that dark state of living, I want to invite you to come to this altar. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to take a long time because I know God's already been moving. So would you come now? If you're online today, if you just let us know, there are people that are right there online that are there to communicate with you, to say, hey, I can pray for you right now. We're going to pray in a minute, but I need to give you an opportunity to come right now. And this is my last call for you to come. And then we're going to move on in the service. Amen. 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 Jesus. Amen. Now, 
while you all still contemplating, let me say something. That was a good little clap. But anytime God saves a teenager, draws a teenager to him, you should be celebrating. See? The attack of the enemy on our young people today is like never before. We need to be praying for them every day. Constantly, never stopping. See, they are, they are up against, I mean, stuff that we endured is nothing compared to what they're up against. There's so much more, so many different ways that the enemy is coming at young people. And so anytime God draws one and gives them strength to come, it's something to celebrate about. Amen. Amen. Come on, is there another one? Final call, final call. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. You ready? Amen. You know, God can really use your life. He can use you as a witness among your peers. It's not easy being different. Because society makes difference seem odd. Like you're doing wrong because you're different. But the thing you have to understand when you accept Jesus is that you're in this world, but you're not of it. And the, what you have is greater than anything the world could offer you if you have Jesus in your heart. Come on, raise your hands to God today. Amen. Can y'all pray with me today? and believe on behalf of this young lady. I believe that God's going to use her life. I already know that the enemy has been working against her, trying to destroy her. I already know that personally. I already know what the enemy has been trying to do. And don't think that it's just unique to her. It's unique to all the young people today. The enemy is trying to destroy them. Why? Because they're the future. So can y'all join me in praying with her today? I need you to pray today. Come on, dear Jesus. I stand before you today. A sinner in need of a Savior. You are the Savior. You died for me. You got up. Because you were resurrected. My life can be resurrected. From the pits of darkness. Make me the new creation today. That you say I can be old is gone the new has come In Jesus name amen you know it's just that simple if you made that declaration today even if you didn't come forward today if you see myself see Pastor Ron let us know we want to give you some next steps in your journey Lift your hands to God today. Father, we thank you today. We praise you, God, for this day. God, we ask that you continue to be with us, God, as we leave this place, but not your presence, that you will continue to dwell with us, watch over us, and keep us. God, continue, Lord, to just empower us, oh God, beyond, God, what we can, what we can even imagine in you. Renew us day by day. Our desire, God, is to have revelation illumination in our life, God, every day that you, oh God, would rain your light down in our hearts, that you will give us the ability, God, to not only to come into the knowledge, but to have the boldness to walk it out. Lord, we thank you for that now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all today.